Hello and welcome to our service for today, Sunday, June the 28th. It's a beautiful day. Hope you've all been able to get out in the garden and enjoy the sunshine. Later on today, we'll be welcoming Liz Edwards of North Shields Baptist Church and she'll be bringing God's word to us. But first, let's open our hearts and our minds to God as we read Psalm 121. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watch all over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Amen. Let's carry on our worship now as we sing together our first song, King of Kings, Majesty. Father, we thank you that you are our Lord and God. You reign sovereign over all your creation. Our every thought is known to you before we utter it. You hold the whole world in your hands and we confess you are our Lord and God. Forgive us for our failings. We thank you for your immeasurable love. We come to you now, Father, when the whole world is in turmoil, 
knowing that you alone can meet our need. We ask that you deliver us from the pandemic that sweeps through the nations. We ask on behalf of our country that you will forgive our neglect of you, that you will create a spirit of repentance that we may return to you. Sweep through our land by your Holy Spirit and bring revival to our country. We thank you that you are a God who hears and answers prayer. We pledge our hearts and our lives to your service. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Roger. And now we're going to hear God's word. We're going to read from Micah chapter 6. A little later, Paul will read from Romans chapter 12. So now from Micah chapter 6 and from verse 1 to verse 8. Listen to what the Lord is saying. Stand up and state your case against me. Let the mountains and hills be called to witness your complaints. And now, O mountains, listen to the Lord's complaint. He has a case against his people. He will bring charges against Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? What have I done to make you tired of me? Answer me. For I brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from slavery. I sent Moses, Aaron and Miriam to help you. Don't you remember my people? How King Balak of Moab tried to, to have you cursed? And how Balaam son of Beor blessed you instead? And remember your journey from Acacia Grove to Gilgal, when I, the Lord, did everything I could to teach you about my faithfulness. What can we bring to the Lord? What kind of offering should we give him? Should we bow before our God with offerings of yearly calves? Should we offer him thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Should we sacrifice our firstborn children to pay for our sins? No. O oh, people, the Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you. To do what is right. To love mercy. And to walk humbly with your God. And now Tony will lead us in prayer. Father God, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, we are thankful for always having the present opportunity to come with our prayers of intercession to one we know who listens and is faithful in response. Today, we come seeking that igniting of wisdom and insight in the leaders of our country and world, as well as our own Baptist community in our association and our nations. We pray that they may have the strength of character to act upon your will for all the people in these difficult times of crisis and tension. We pause to add our own petitions for those we might name. May they experience your guidance and effect change for the good of all. Lord, you made us to have physical, emotional and spiritual health. We acknowledge that the sins of the human race have damaged that fullness from the beginning and in our own day. However, this does not prevent us from coming to you for mercy in the name of Jesus. For those who struggle with continuing illness, isolation, homelessness and needs in all these areas, we also pray that you give stamina to all those who support them. We pause to name those we love and no in either category. May they experience healing, restoration and renewal in body, mind and spirit. 
Lord Jesus, we pray for the witness of your people by those who will declare your word today, by ourselves through this coming week. May each find encouragement in the prompting and provision of ability by your Holy Spirit's gifting and fruit. May we bring spiritual insight and refreshing moments to all we meet as we express your loving kindness to others as we have experienced it ourselves. We pause to name any situation or person who is laid on our hearts for such a time as this. May they hear your spirit calling for their personal response to one who loves them. Father God, we present these prayers trusting in that other translation of your name from the Hebrew, Jehovah Jireh. Not just the one who provides, but as Abraham foresaw, the one who will see to it. So in advance we thank you for your grace and deliverance just as he did. Our faith is in you alone. Amen. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 8 from the message. So, here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognise what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings out the best out of you. He develops well-formed maturity in you. I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given to me and especially as I have responsibilities in relation to you. Living then as every one of you does in pure grace, it's important that you do not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and what he does for us, not by what we are and what we do for him. In this way, we're like the various parts of a, of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. If it was a chopped off finger or cut off toe, <laughs> we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So, since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvellously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's go ahead and be what we were made to be, without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something that we aren't. If you preach, just preach God's message, nothing else. If you help, just help. Don't take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful that you don't get bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. Hello. I count it a huge privilege to be able to speak on this passage because I think it's one of the most challenging passages in the New Testament. Not challenging in terms of, of understanding what it means, but in terms of living it out. So let's take a look at it, shall we? It starts with a little word, so. In the older versions, 
that's therefore. But either way, we've got to work out what it's coming from. What is the therefore, therefore? Why is it so? It's because this follows on from 11 chapters in which Paul has expanded upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right from the beginning, he starts at creation in chapter 1. God made everything, he made it good. He made us, he made us to have um, a relationship with him. And he also gave us free will. And if we choose not to go his way, then there are consequences of that, just as there are consequences of following God's way. And he explains also how God himself has provided the remedy for us, for that time, those times when we have gone astray, gone far away from him. He said that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's a very sad thing to think of, isn't it? That we could have attained to all the glory of God and yet we have sinned and fallen short. He says that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God in Jesus Christ our Lord is eternal life. That's the offer. Free gift, eternal life, fullness of life. He goes on to say how that um, God has made himself our Abba, our Father, and that with his Holy Spirit deep within us, speaking spirit to spirit, we come to know at a deep level God as our Father. He says that we have been given all things along with Jesus. He said, if he gives you that much, he won't withhold the rest. All the riches of heaven are yours. And nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ. So, so, oh, let me take you back just before the so. At the end of chapter 11, Paul breaks into a song of praise. Is there anyone around who can explain God? Anyone smart enough to tell him what to do? Anyone who has done him such a huge favour that God has to ask his advice? Everything comes from him. Everything happens through him. Everything ends up in him. Always glory. Always praise. Yes, yes, yes. So, here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your all everyday, ordinary life. Your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Here's all that God has done for you, he says. That's the reason and your response to that reason is to give your life in service to him. That's our response. It's a normal, natural response. Of course it's right. If God has given everything to us, we should give everything to him. In the old version, it translates that as offer yourself as a living sacrifice to God. And you can imagine sort of climbing up on the altar and laying down and saying, here I am. Not a, a sacrifice that's killed, but one that is alive. It's not a case of laying down our lives in sacrifice that we should die but that we should live for God. 
our everyday, ordinary life, our sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life, that's what we're offering to God. Our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every day of the week life. And that's our worship. That's what really mean, worship means. So why is it so challenging if it's such an obvious response? God gives us everything, we should give God everything. The trouble is leaving up, leading, living up to it. Once we've decided and we've made that decision and we say, yes, Lord, here's my life, it's yours. Then we constantly have to live up to that. It's not easy because the culture around us is always wanting to squeeze us into its mould. And the spirit within us is wanting to make us explode out of that mould and into the fullness of life that God has planned for us. So there's conflict going on all the time. I love the way that this translation puts it. It says, don't be so well adjusted to your culture that you fit in without even thinking. This is why Paul has to actually tell us what to do and not assume that it's, it's natural and it'll just happen. There is always the pressure from the culture around us from our own natural instincts that keep coming through to live against God's way. Let's have a quick look at what God's way is like. Um, he says, you're like various parts of the human body. Each part has a meaning on its own and as part of the whole. So you have to regard the other parts of the body with the same sort of attitude as you regard yourself. Lift them up to a place of honour and respect and love. Not just the people that you like, but the people who are harder to get on with too. God has brought us all into one big family and together Whatever our background, whatever our nationality, however much our knowledge of the Bible is, however long we've been in church or not, if we belong to Jesus, we are part of that one body, that one family, and we all have an equal place in it. We do things differently, but that's because that's the way a body works, isn't it? One thing does one way, and another part of the body has another function. But together, we make the body of Christ. So he says, look, whatever you're called to do in your place, in the body, do it. Do it wholeheartedly. Not just do it to the... Um, as the best of your ability, go beyond that. Do it to the, the ability that God gives you. Because you're doing it all for God. And then he says, love. Love one another. Love from the centre of who you are. Don't fake it. Well, that was Jesus' last commandment, wasn't it? Before he was killed, he said it was a new commandment. That we should love one another as he has loved us. He says, by this will people know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Look, I'm going to leave you to read through the rest of that passage, I do encourage you to do that. Read through the whole of chapter 12. 
and he keeps going on giving examples of what it's like to live to the glory of God, to live as a living sacrifice day by day. That is our natural and right response to God. He's given us the reason. He spent 11 chapters laying it out. Here's the response. The result? Well, let's look back again to that little bit just before chapter 12 starts. To that wonderful song of praise. Everything comes from him. That's the reason. Everything happens through him. That's the response. We do it through his strength. Everything ends up in him. Always glory, always praise. Result, glory to God. And isn't that always what we want the result of worship to be? Glory to God. That he should get the honour, not us. People should look at our lives and say, I want to belong to their God. They should be able to look at the church, a group of us together, and say, I want to be part of that because their God is clearly a good and loving God. Paul speaks strongly. He says, that he's, um, he says, this is what I want you to do. In other versions, he says, I urge you to do this. He encourages us. We need that encouragement. Without it, we tend to lose focus and let the culture around us start squashing us back into its mould. Let's burst out. Let's show the world how great God is by our lives. Let's show them what love really is. What it means to honour other people. Not by putting ourselves down, but by lifting them up. Let's say a prayer together. Lord God, you've done so much. You've given so much. And now I want to give to you my life, all of it, every part, my days, my hours, my minutes, all for you. It's not nearly as much as you deserve, but it's all I have, all for you, all for your glory. Amen.
And so as we bring our service to a close, let us pray. God, be with us in our mind, body and spirit as together we seek health and wholeness for us all. Renew our sense of vision, sustain our hope and help us to focus on the possibilities that lie ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>